Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create an interactive box plot so you can pair two sets of data. So in this example, we've got a series of data. Maybe we've got eight items here and they've got some value, some component. And we just wanted to compare two of them with a box plot. And we have a selection here where we can make a comparison. Let's say we want to compare between one and two. We select that. That compares number one. You, oh, we already have item two here. Let's compare items one and the last item, item eight. And now you notice that item eight has changed here and it's also changed in this box plot. So I'll show you how to create something like this. It's going to take a series of different functions and different features in Excel to do this. Now this is something where you can put your source data here and these two helper columns and make this particular selection uh, column or range of cells and your chart put on another uh, tab and it could be almost like a dashboard or a portion of a dashboard. So let's see how we do this. So I already brought over my data into this area over here. I just need to make the helper columns and also my selection columns. So let's make my selection columns first. And uh, let's say I'll just make, I'll just put that first area here and this is where I, we need to make my selection, right? So my first selection here, this is going to be the first choice and this one will be the second choice. And to make that drop down, all I need to do is create a data validation list. And I want to choose between items one and items eight. That's already kind of there for me. So a neat feature in Excel is you can create a data valid dropdown based on a range of cells here. What we need to do is go under data and under data validation and create a list. And this selecting the list and my source is going to be uh, these particular eight columns or eight cells. Click OK, and now you notice I have a drop down here, and I can select items one to eight. I'll do the same thing for here, but since I already created here, all I can, do, all I need to do is just press Control C, and then Control Control V, and I've copied uh, those set of attributes for here. Right, so that's my drop down there. Now I can select items one, and then item two, and you can see it's done nothing because I haven't created my helper column here. So I'm going to create a helper column here that will reference these selections. That's going to reference M2 here or M3 here. And this one, this particular one is going to reference uh, this one here, right? So whenever I change this, it will change accordingly here, right? Item four, and maybe this would be item eight, right? So what I need to do here is to look up values based on the selection of the column. What I want to do is create an index match function. So the index function, I'm going to type equals index and press tab to just complete that. And the array will be this whole array, this whole table here, All right? And I'm going to press F4. That's going to lock the, the range because when we copy it into other cells, we want to have that range stay constant. So, so my second argument here is going to be the row number, right? So it's, I want this lookup, this index to look up in this whole array and pick out which row to bring back. So if I'm on item four and I want to pick back that first value here, I want to pick out that second row, right? So to do that, I'm going to use a function called rows, W S press tab to open it. And what it's going to do is I'm just going to reference J one first click there and colon J1 and put this J1 uh, as an absolute cell reference, press F4. What it's going to do is it's going to count the rows, right? Close that. It's going to count the rows. J1 to J1 is only one row. When it goes down to this one, it's going to be two rows. So it's going to say which row number? It's going to be the second row here, right? Comma and the column. The column needs to be based on, let me move this tip here. The column needs to be based on which number column item four is in. So item four is in one, two, three, the fourth column. So I can't really hard code item four in there because this is going to change based on the drop down here. What I want to do is use a function called match. So I'm going to type match and match cell J1 and put that in absolute cell value, Press put a dollar sign right there, match that and 
let me bring my tip back down here so we can see a little bit better, right? So I want to match the lookup value, which is item four in where the lookup array. And my lookup array is cell A1 to H1, right? That list. Press the F4 key to lock that because when I copy it over, I want to keep that consistent, right? So I want to match that and I want to do an exact match. So I type this zero. So what this what this particular function does is it's going to look for whatever it's in cell J4, it's going to match this range of cells. And since item four is in the cell D, the fourth position, it will bring back the number four. So one, two, three, four, and it'll match number four. So it's going to match the fourth column to bring that back. Press enter. Whoops, I forgot to put a closing parenthesis there. Excel smart enough to figure it out that I needed that. So I'm going to accept this correction. Click yes. Oh, we have item four. We didn't want that. We want, because it's bring it's bringing back the rows function here, which is one row. So the first row, of course, is going to be item four. We want this one to say J2, right? Then it's going to bring back 148. So if I click the fill handle and drag that formula down, now you notice that it's brought in everything else. So let's see how this particular function works, just to get an idea of what's happening. Well, what we can do is bring up the formula evaluator, go to evaluate, go under formulas tab, go under evaluate formula, right? So this is how it's actually working. We have the formula first evaluating the rows function, click evaluate. And you see that it brought back the number two because the rows is looking at J1 to J2. This first cell is J1 to J2. Actually, let me, let me go into J3 and that probably give you a better idea since we worked in J2. Let me close this and go into J3. Now you notice that it moved from J1 to J, J1 colon J3 from J1 colon J2, right? So that's how it works when you don't have the dollar signs in front of it. They don't stay static. So let's see how this particular set of functions work. Let's evaluate that. So we have a rows function. This particular row fun rows function is counting up how many rows show up in J1 to J3. It should be three, right? So you click evaluate and you see that number three there. The next function it's going to execute is matching J1. So J1 is item four. Click evaluate. It's going to say, oh, item four. Let me look in cell A1 to H1. So cell A1, cells A1 to H1, and it's going to bring back the fourth fourth column, one, two, three, four. It's going to bring back the number four, right? It finds item four and four, right? So that brings back the number four. Now what it's going to do with this index function, it's going to look at this whole range, A1 to H20. And it's going to bring back the third row, fourth column, third row, one, two, three, third row, fourth column, one, two, three, four, which brings that back 141. So this is how these set of functions are working. So I'll close that. Well, let's evaluate that. And we have our 141 here, right? So that's how it's working. And if I can just take this and drag it over, it will, oh, oops. When we copied it over, of course, we had some static cell reference here, some absolute cell reference here, so it didn't copy over. In the case where we only have really two items to compare, maybe it's easier to do something like uh, change it here. So we don't want J1 to K1, we want K1 to K2, and here we want uh, K1 to, we want, we want K1 as, oops, Control Z doesn't do that. We want K1, we want K1 as our reference, right? We want to match that, press enter, and now we have our correct value. Double click to bring that, that down and we can see item 8, 15, 115, 48, right? So that works there. Now this is easy when we have two items to compare. If you wanted to have like five items to compare, you don't want to go through and change it for each one when we copy uh, this thing over. What we can do, let me show you another trick. Let me delete this and show you how we can do that. To When we copy things over, it will automatically sense that we're in K1. So to make it a little bit more automated, what we want to do is take the dollar sign off the J1 mention, right? So when we copy it over, J will go and change the K, and in this instance, J will change the K here too. So if I take the dollar sign off there for this particular array here, and also take it off here, right? And press Control Enter, and double click to copy that formula down. Now, now all I need to do is drag this fill handle over, and now you notice that it has taken the values here. So item eight, is 15, 115, 48. And you notice if I click here in 15, it's changed from K1, uh, from J1 to K1 in both instances, right? So there's my J1 there, 
and there's my K1 there. And the reason, of course, why it didn't change earlier is was I, I had the dollar signs in front of the letters, which made it an absolute cell reference. Now, with this in mind, all I need to do is take these values and create the box plot. And there is, in Excel 2016, there is already a box plot, box plot um, chart. It's called Box and Whiskers. I can click on that, and it's done it for me already, right? It's kind of nice. Uh, early, in earlier versions of Excel, they didn't have this available. You had to create it manually with a couple other steps. Here, here you had um, an easy way to do it. So I can click on that, remove the uh, access label down there, and you can see that it's probably going to work because now I have item 4 here and item 8 here. If I change this to item 1, you'll see you notice that that changes. Item 8 here, if I change this to item 2, now you notice that that changes. And this changes correspondingly here. Right Now the rest of it is just cleaning up the chart. Re removing the grid lines here. Click on the grid lines. Whoops, let me click out there. Let's click back in here. Click on the grid lines. Press delete, maybe add a, a chart legend so I know what's happening, which ones are, are, are blue and which ones are red. That's the blue one, that's item one, that's item two. And if I wanted to double click to make this fit a little bit better, double click that and it fits. You notice also that once you do that, the chart expands a little bit and that's because the chart area, the, the dimensions, they will adjust based on the cells. If you didn't want that to happen, you kind of had nice uh, a nice aspect and you didn't want that to happen, you have to go under Format and go under the uh, Size Group, click on that expand, Expanding Menu item. And under Properties, you can click it to say, don't move or size with chart. All right? So it won't move it and it won't resize it. So you can go change this and nothing happens, right? This nothing happens earlier. You saw it, it moved out a little bit more, but now we've turned off that feature and so it doesn't do that. So let me double click here again to fill that. And so now I can change it all I want. Maybe I change this to item four and this one to item five. And now you notice that our boxes change for our box plot. So that's a way that you can add interactivity to a box plot. We can probably put these these particular items here on another tab and make it part of our dashboard. So there's our box plot with a little bit of interactivity. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.